Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an editing tutorial on After Effects. I'm going to try to go over some of the things that many YouTubers such as Quackity, Fearless, and Cita use in their videos. For any of you guys that have watched my previous editing tutorial on Premiere Pro, I'll be going over some of the same things. This tutorial may not be as good as the Premiere one because After Effects isn't my main editing software, but it should still help you guys out. Let's not waste any more time and let's just jump into it. So the first thing I want to go over is smoothing out keyframes. So let's say you have a simple scaling animation like this. It's like a linear animation, right? If you want to make it look smoother, all you're going to have to do is highlight these two keyframes right here, right click on the keyframe, and use Keyframe Assistant. From there, you're going to want to go to Easy Ease, and then to Graph Editor. Once you're in Graph Editor, right click and make sure you're on Edit Speed Graph. From there, you can play around with this thing right here and you can make your animation look so much smoother. So for example, if I just drag this one all the way to the right and then play it, you'll see it looks a lot smoother than just that linear animation before. I wanted to bring up smoothing out keyframes since a lot of YouTubers use them when they use zooms and many other things. It doesn't only apply to scale, it can also apply to positioning, rotation, and all that stuff. Since I'm not using a video and you can't really see how a zoom effect would look, try it on your own video. Alright, so, so now let's move on to shake effects. So for the shake effects, I'll be using a plugin called Sapphire. A lot of YouTubers use this plugin to create many different effects that will make your videos look awesome. If you don't have Sapphire, don't worry, there are definitely some good tutorials on how to do a good shake effect without Sapphire on YouTube. If you have Sapphire, that's great, I'll show you my shake settings. This is what the shake will end up looking like. You can apply it to your text and your videos. So here are my controls here. My main amplitude is 0.5 and my frequency is 16. If you want to change how aggressive the shake is, the frequency is definitely how to do that. So for example, if I change that to like 24 or something, you can see it's much more aggressive. Some more settings I have here is in my tilt shake. My tilt rand amp is 18. My tilt rand frequency is 19.6. Tilt wave amp and tilt wave frequency is zero and then 0.5. My tilt face is just zero. So if you copy all of those effects, you're gonna get a shake effect that looks like this. All right. Oh my God. All right, so now let's move on to motion tracking. I'm gonna use this video for an example. So what you're gonna wanna do first is find the thing that you're wanting to track. So I'm just gonna use my mouse for example in this video. What you're gonna wanna do is first zoom into it. Now that I'm all zoomed in, keyframe the position and then you're gonna wanna move this thing all the way to the right and then move forward five frames. So since it hasn't moved, I'm just gonna keyframe it again and then move forward another five frames. So now that my mouse has moved, I'm gonna reposition it to the middle and I'm gonna move forward five frames again. So all you're gonna wanna do is just keep moving five frames forward and repositioning what you're following into the middle. So now let me play it for you. So I didn't do the whole thing, but you can see that it followed the mouse for a short amount of time that I did keyframe. That's pretty much how I motion track and how many other YouTubers motion track stuff. So the last thing I want to go over is subtitling. So I know Quackity is mainly who subtitles, but if you combine it with Fearless and Cide style, it'll look really good. Take your text tool and just type something random, and then align it to wherever you want it to be. I usually have my subtitles down here, so that's where I'm going to be keeping it. And then from there, open up this drop down menu and open up text and then keyframe source text. So if I move this thing forward a little bit, take out my text tool and then edit this text. So you can see that each keyframe is when I edited the text. So if we play this out, you notice that as it hits the keyframe, it changes the text. So in a video, you can do this when someone's speaking. So one thing I forgot to mention was how you can also style your text by adding colored outlines and stuff like that. When you change anything from what the text says to how big the outline is, there will be a keyframe added. 96. You guys, 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 shut up, shut up. Dude, I'm about to hit 100. For my... So each time you edit the text, it's going to add a new keyframe. That's pretty much the basic of subtitles. All right, so that's pretty much it. Some of the things that I didn't go over here that were in my Premiere Pro tutorial were audio distortion, green screening. I feel as if I also explained some of the effects more in depth in that tutorial as well. So I highly recommend watching that if you edit in Premiere Pro in addition to After Effects. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope it helped. If it did, make sure to leave a like on this video. If you wanna check out some of my other content, feel free to do so, maybe even subscribe. That's all I have to say, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.